All right, let's figure this out together. Is the keto diet a weight loss scam? I'm really interested in this because this diet is going viral. I swear by the ketogenic diet. What is that? It's a diet, it's simple, it's just- To stay away from the carbs, right? Yes. Which is- <laughs> I don't eat any bread, any crackers, any chips, any- It is the most Google diet. And now we have celebrity influencers and doctors and fitness gurus saying that it's the best thing since sliced bread. In fact, the keto industry now is more than $10 billion. We got keto cookies and keto bread. There's even keto ice cream now. Yummy. You know when something becomes so popular, we have to take a step back and dig a little deeper. So here's a typical keto scenario. You got a grown up man, not really happy with his body probably 20 to 30 pounds overweight. He's literally willing to do anything to get in shape. And don't get me wrong, he's tried dieting, doing a bunch of cardio, he's even sweating it out in the sauna, maybe even taking dangerous pills to lose weight. And nothing seems to work long term. Even though he loses a few pounds, he gains it all back. And now he sees a social media post by his best friend. It's about this amazing new keto diet. His buddy writes, bro, I've lost five pounds in the first week on this keto diet. That's all he needs to hear. Wow, he wonders. If my buddy can lose five pounds in one week with this magical diet, that means I can do it too. Let's see, five pounds in one week, that's like 20 pounds in a month? Sign me up. And he goes on keto. First, he cleans out his kitchen, throws away all the bread, the cereal, the rice, the potatoes, the desserts, the pastas, oatmeal, everything. Even the delicious fruits, like this big pineapple he bought, and a few mangoes, oranges, and bananas. And yes, even those chocolate chip cookies are in the dumpster. He's now ready to change his life, finally, to get that six pack he's been dreaming about. He imagines how he'll be able to take his shirt off at the beach with pride. All the embarrassment and shame, gone. So he begins keto. 80% of his calories are from fat, 15% from protein, and 5% from carbs. And he's allowed a maximum of 50 grams of carbs per day. He gets these gadgets to measure ketone bodies in his urine. More on that later. He's all ready to go. But due to his curious nature, he starts reading a little bit. He goes on Google and types, how does keto work? And he sees this headline that catches his attention. It's called the magic of keto metabolism. He learns that when he's eating carbs back in the day, his liver was metabolizing the carbs into glucose. And he remembered from biology class that Glucose is the main fuel or energy source for the brain and body. He learns that a mitochondria inside our cells take glucose and convert it into ATP, which is the body's unit of energy. Then he reads that keto weight loss consists of losing water weight first and then fat loss. And he could even lose his muscle mass. Ah, whatever. As long as the number on the scale goes down, He's a happy camper. So it's day one. He weighs himself and he writes down his weight on the spreadsheet. And he's determined to weigh himself every single morning right after he wakes up. And boy, is he excited. He loses five pounds in the first five days. Holy moly. And bro, he doesn't even care that he's suffering from the keto flu. His girl keeps telling him that he smells a bit like nail polish remover, especially around his crotch when he sweats. He assures her that it's just temporary and he's not putting on nail polish. He even has bad breath, but he's like, ah, whatever. I'm losing weight, who gives a shit? Every single night before he goes to bed, he prays to God, oh Lord, please help me keep the weight off. But on the inside, even though he's hiding it and even denying it, he has muscle cramps, nausea, and his sleep hasn't been good since he started. In the past, he was eating a bunch of carbs at night, which helped him sleep like a baby. But he knows that this keto flu is only temporary. 
another blog article told him that. And he knows that after a few weeks, he'll recover and everything will be fine. And indeed, not only does he recover from the keto flu, at least mostly, but he continues to lose weight. First week, five pounds. Second week, three pounds. And the third week, two pounds. That's a total of 10 pounds lost in three weeks. And even though he's not losing weight like the first few days, he's still happy and enthusiastic. He also posts on social media and starts bragging to his work buddies. My clothes are fitting better, man. He thinks that his dream about becoming lean is about to turn into a reality. He doesn't even care that he's lost a few friends and he's not being invited anymore to go out with them. They just find it weird that they're eating pizza and pasta at their favorite Italian resto, and this guy's ordering a keto salad. It's just too weird for them. But he's found some new friends who are also part of the keto cult. I mean, community. They get him interested in watching some science videos about the physiology of keto metabolism. He learns that now his glycogen stores have been depleted, and his liver is oxidizing fat into ketones. And whereas the brain is normally using glucose for mental processing, it has switched to using ketones. He wonders, is this why I have a little bit of brain fog? You see, even though most of the keto flu symptoms have disappeared, his brain is still not functioning as it used to. And the nasty smell of acetone, one of the ketone bodies, is still coming from his body. And his girl, still complaining. And his arms are looking a bit scrawny now. Hey, but that's okay. Because the muscle glycogen that he lost after stopping carbs is mostly water. And since his glycogen stores are depleted now that he's keto adapted, he's also lost the water from his muscles. Hence the scrawny arms. But it's all good. He's now lost more than 10 pounds and it's time for the second month of keto. Second month is still okay but not that great. He's still craving carbs and being a pizza lover his whole life. It's shocking to his family that he hasn't had a pizza in more than a month now. And now that his routine is stabilizing, he's eating the same boring foods every single day. And although he's bought some keto goodies, including keto energy bars, keto cereal, keto bread, and even keto pasta, they taste horrible. But he's still getting satiated. And the horrible headaches are now finally gone. Oh, oh, I forgot to tell you about the headaches. During keto, your body gets depleted of electrolytes. Sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and chloride. Why? Because insulin signaling is very low. Normally, when we eat carbs, insulin gets produced by the beta cells of the pancreas and causes glucose to be transported from the bloodstream into the cells of your body. And then the mitochondria uses that glucose and converts it into energy. But what about the electrolytes? You see, insulin has many roles in the body. It ensures that your muscles don't break down. It's anti-catabolic. It also tells your brain that glucose is being used properly in the body. And at the level of the kidneys, insulin spikes after eating carbs allow for the proper absorption of electrolytes. Electrolytes are crucial for brain signaling because neurons use them to communicate with each other. They're also necessary for the heart to pump blood. But our buddy here is on keto, so insulin is not really being produced much, and thus he's lacking electrolyte absorption. The kidneys literally just dump out the electrolytes in the bloodstream. This could explain his brain fog, muscle cramps, headaches, heart palpitations, and many other features of the keto flu. But he's now supplementing with electrolytes, so he feels a little bit better. More good news. He loses another five pounds in the second month, and that's a total of 15 pounds lost in just two months. And then he gets more curious and starts Googling. What is the actual magic of the keto diet? Upon reading about energy balance, he has his first aha moment. <laughs> he learns that weight loss wasn't because of some godly food. It was simply because keto allowed him to get full on less calories as usual. And since the food is so boring, he's not really interested in overeating or binging. Well, not yet. 
and he cut out most of the processed junk, except for a few keto goodies on the weekend. But as he wanted to continue losing the same amount of weight month after month, it wasn't looking as good as he thought. His expectations weren't being met anymore. Because in month three, he lost only three pounds. And that was nuts, which he was allowed to eat. So he started studying leptin and ghrelin, the satiety and hunger hormones. He wanted to know more about the brain and body connection. And he learned that certain male hormones are the key to metabolism, fat loss, and muscle gain. And indeed, he fully accepted that everything starts from the brain. So his brain must be optimized if he wants to keep losing weight and keep it off. Leptin is released by fat cells when we're full. It signals satiety. Ghrelin signals to the brain that we need to eat because we're hungry. With keto, due to the intake of omega-3s, neurons in the gut signal to the brain that he's full. And the leptin signals from fat cells made him feel satiated. And of course, ghrelin decreased after his keto meals and he didn't feel hungry anymore. How amazing, hey? And then came month four. He gained two pounds. What the f***? He became sad, confused, and worried. He wondered why he had risked losing his romantic relationship, his social life, his brain health, even his testosterone levels were low. He made these sacrifices to lose weight and he gained two pounds. He went back to Google and read some more articles. And that's when he figured it all out. He dug deeper into the concept of energy balance. You see, losing weight is simply an energy equation. If your energy consumption, AKA eating food, is greater than your energy expenditure, AKA your activity, then you gain weight. But if your activity, and this includes everything, breathing, exercising, walking, not watching Netflix, digesting food. If this activity or energy expenditure is greater than your energy consumption, then you lose weight. But you know what our friend realized? Brain cells or neurons control how much fat will be burned. There are connections from neurons to fat cells all over the body, including belly fat or visceral fat, and through thermogenesis, the brain regulates the energy balance in the body. You've heard of this basal metabolic rate or BMR, right? This is how many calories your body burns at rest when we're not doing anything. The brain controls that too. But why does energy balance work like that? Evolution, because that's how we've evolved over millions of years. The brain-body connection is interested in one thing only, survival. And it helps us survive by keeping a balance of energy, also known as homeostasis. So as our bro here was curious about he actually gained two pounds during the fourth month on keto, he realized something. Even though his calories in were the same, I mean, come on, he was eating the same damn thing every single day. The brain decided that his fat cells were shrinking a bit too much. And the brain wants you to survive. It has no idea that you're on a diet. The brain thinks that you're in metabolic trouble. And why wouldn't it think that? Ketosis usually occurs during long periods of starvation and famine and deadly diseases. So the brain decides to decrease energy expenditure or calories out becomes less than calories in and therefore weight regain starts. Our boy was so pissed during the fourth month that one day he relapsed. He went on a binge and guess what he devoured? Two large pepperoni pizzas and an entire tub of Ben and Jerry's half-baked ice cream. Man, I wish I was there. His wife told me later he was like a baby who tasted sugar for the first time. It was astonishing. So he quit keto, gained all the weight back and more during that fifth month. He became really depressed. That was the moment in his life that he hit rock bottom. And then he found me on YouTube. 
I made a video about my own weight loss journey. How I lost 50 pounds, kept the weight off for over 10 years, got a six pack, and kept all the muscle as well. By the way, to be honest, I just wanted to do all that to get laid with hot girls. And I was willing to do anything to lose weight, just like this guy. When he first joined my private group on Facebook, we chatted about his health and fitness journey. I gave him some quick tips on how to keep the weight off after going on any kind of diet. I told him how I still eat all of my favorite foods, especially carbs, and how I do these short, fun workouts a few days every week, and how I never have cravings, and I never do boring cardio. And best of all, I was able to date all those hot women, and then I married the hottest girl, who's now the love of my life. And it all started when I figured out how to trick the brain so it continues to tell the body to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time. I created some natural science-based protocols so the brain never senses survival mode. Instead, the brain senses abundance because of all the awesome food I eat every single day. And he heard my story and saw that I doubled my testosterone levels naturally. And then he joined my coaching group. I was so happy to learn about his life. He was the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Wealthy, traveled the world, had a great family too. But he was not in the best shape and a few health conditions as well, including low T and low sperm count. He also wanted to improve his bedroom performance so he could satisfy his partner and rock her world. So I taught him everything I knew, he did my video course, he read my book, and he became a true success story. He lost 30 pounds over the span of six months, five pounds a month. Nice, gradual, and smooth. Remember, you can't fool your brain, so you gotta be real smart. And guess what? He's kept the weight off for over a year now. He's in his 50s, fitter than ever, and happier than he's ever been. He even increased his testosterone levels using some natural herbs that I recommended. And yes, my protocols also revved up his love life and the missus is now happier than ever. And you know who's the happiest? Me, because I changed this guy's life. But back to the original question, is keto a weight loss scam? I'm gonna let you answer that one. And I'm gonna go eat some lunch Another meal full of healthy, tasty food. You take care, and I wish you all the best in your weight loss journey. Bye now.